Klaus Gustafsson. You are a member of Nobel Committee for Chemistry. Yes. Can you tell us some words about this year's prize? So the prize this year is about the cellular systems that uh, preserve the genetic information. So uh, it turns out that the DNA molecule, which encodes the genetic information in our cells, that that molecule is frequently damaged and it might also be mutated and that can be caused by both, both by external agents like uh, sunlight the uv radiation in sunlight by smoking different agents in smoking but it can also be uh, internal uh, sources uh, like uh, reactions with water which happens at a quite high frequency actually uh, we also get mutations in the DNA when we replicate the DNA. So every time a cell is divided, we need to create two new copies of the DNA. And together, these different sort of sources of mutations and damage can create a, a real problem for, for our genomes and preservation of genetic material. And what these three prize laureates this year have, have, have done is that they have investigated and described in chemical detail uh, important processes, repair pathways that can correct these mistakes when they arise. And it's uh, both in, there are three different areas of DNA repair that we've been focusing on. One is uh, this basic tissue repair that take care of, of, of mutations uh, or chemical damages, I should say, to bases, many of them spontaneous or hydrolytic. Uh, we also have the mismatch repair system, which takes care of the rare mistakes that the DNA polymerase leaves behind when it replicates the DNA. And then we have the nucleotide excision repair system, which takes care of, for example, UV-induced damage and, and, and other types of, for example, agents in smoking. So uh, that's what this year's prize is about. Was this a discovery they made that uh, there is a repair system? Uh, so uh, the existence of some sort of DNA repair is something that goes back a very long time. And probably the first, uh, first identification of the repair system was the discovery of, of an activity called photolyase in bacteria, which could overcome uh, UV-induced damages, but at that time the mechanisms for how that happened was not known at all. This was back in the 40s and then in, in, the, early, in the middle of the 50s when, when they saw it in extracts. Uh, actually transforming that, those phenomenons in, in sort of cells and in, 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 in extracts is something uh, that all these three sort of lorries have done. They have taken sort of preliminary observations and made it into sort of real chemistry. And when it comes to the photolyase, which I didn't talk about during this price, uh, price uh, press, uh, press conference, it's actually Aziz Sanyar who has both cloned the gene, identified the protein and described the mechanism for this really important enzyme. The reason why I didn't talk about this repair today was that this is actually something that's found only in bacteria. We don't have this type of repair in our cells. But all these other three types of repair, they were first identified in simple cells. And then it turned out that this knowledge was applicable also to our higher human cells. And that we have very similar system that take care of damage to, to our DNA. But the repair system is not enough. We still have diseases. Uh, caused by, by the damage of DNA. How big part of the diseases is, uh, has its their origin in this process? So, uh, one can say that DNA mutations, how to put this, I mean, if you think about cancer, I would say that all forms of cancers start with a mutation or a DNA damage. That's how they start. Uh, we know, uh, so I mean, that's how important this is. And if you don't have repair system that take care of the damages as they, as they occur, the frequency of cancer, for example, becomes much, much higher. 
and there are diseases where you have where you have uh, the disturbed repair mechanisms they don't work as they should they are in them they are themselves mutated and that then you get very high levels of cancer one example is Cyroderma pigmentosum a disease characterized very carefully by a by an excellent American scientist his name is John Cleaver and he found all these different genes that cause Cyroderma pigmentosum and then it turns out that all these genes actually, or all, most of them, actually encode components of the nucleotide excision repair system in, in, in human cells. And these, the, the people, or the, the patients suffering from this disease, they cannot repair UV-induced damage as they should, and they get extremely sensitive to, to sunlight. They need to stay stay inside. And when they go inside, when they are subjected to UV light, they develop different types of tumors, uh, and uh, they often die from malignant melanoma or, or this type of skin tumors. So that that's that's the importance of it. But then, of course, a certain level of mutations is also something that's probably needed. Uh, so even if the cells try to sort of lower the levels as much as possible. Of course, you don't want a frozen genome because Darwin evolution requires that there are at least some mutations that take place and that we can utilize for selection. It has to be a little flexible. <laughs> yes, even if I think that the, uh, the focus in lowering, in, in lowering mutation rates, but uh, I mean, they, they can have positive effects. Are there any concrete drugs or treatments, uh, treatments that have developed from this research? One can say that we understand now how some treatments work. So, for instance, radiation is something that it's you know widely used in the treatment of different types of cancers. And what one thing, one important thing that radiation does is that it induces breaks in DNA. So it breaks down the DNA in cancer cells. And breaking down the DNA means that we overwhelm the repair system. The repair system, there are so many DNA damages that it cannot cope. And then the, the cells might choose to go into program cell death or apoptosis. And so suddenly we understand at least one way that, that, this, uh, that radiation works. There are also new drugs being developed where one tries to, to utilize the, effect, the, the fact that many cancer cells have a defect repair system already to begin with. So by, by inhibiting repair actually in the cancer cells, you might get something that we call synthetic lethality and that will sort of specifically kill the cancer cells. This is a very interesting concept that's been currently developed and I think that there are a number of different pharmaceutical industries that are looking into this. And I think there are one or two drugs that are actually already available that builds on this concept. So this is a field that's very active. Still. It's very active. And if you think about DNA damage, I mean, think about all the things that we read about cigarette smoke, we read about avoiding sort of sunlight, or think about uh, catastrophes like that in Fukushima with a nuclear, sort of with radiation. The, f the threat is to our DNA. It's our genomes that are being threatened. And these are the machineries that are trying to fix it for us. Actually, I thought that Alfred Nobel was a chemist. Chemistry mm. was his field. Mm. What do you think he would say about this year's prize? I think he would be happy and proud. I, I am very happy. I think that this is a prize in the tradition from the discovery of the DNA, understanding how the, the DNA is sort of read by transcription, and now understanding how you actually preserve this genetic information, which is so important for life. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.